Howdy, boys and girls, and welcome back to the Carl and Crappy Show. It is week 10 of the college football season in 2017. It's week 10 of the Carl and Crappy Show, uh, although it's show 11, which is um, a, a confusing thing that goes back a couple weeks that I'm not going to bother to explain. Now, hi, Carla. Hi, Crappy. <laughs> Hashtag math is hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm uh, you know, again, we, we, to go over this, we're, it, it, it's like journalism people, and it's math, and it's like, eh, yeah. whatever, eh, who cares? Um I would I would normally take a moment to 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 perhaps gloat for just a second about last weekend, but but honest to God, there are so many good games this weekend um, that I'm I'm not even going to take the time. And we, we, we've got we've got like eighteen top twenty five matches. I'm not sure. Again, math is hard. I'm not sure that that's actually possible. It feels um, like it. It feels like it. And then there and there are some legit good uh, non top twenty five games, and we have the first college football rankings coming out uh it just came out a couple days ago um I'm, I'm exhausted already and it's only wednesday i know it's a good thing we get an extra hour of sleep on saturday oh god right? that's, that's right that's right yes that's the one really good thing so so cheers to that for um being a busy college football weekend and at least you get an extra hour of sleep and also we we have holiday drinks at starbucks um Woo! so so yeah so so coffee an extra hour of sleep um it's gonna be a good weekend I plan I, on doing nothing but sitting in front of my TV because you're right. There are like 17 million games happening on Saturday, and there's no break. There are every single time slot. So we actually we have, we have a, a beer festival that we're going to uh, while Ohio State is playing, which makes me nervous. Although my, my record during these things is okay, um, and I'm I'm drinking because I was in Columbus last weekend. I'm drinking a uh, uh, something a fine double IPA from a Seven Sons Brewing. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually drink. drinking coffee. I promise. I drank that earlier today. It's empty, but I wanted prop, you know, prop for the show. Um, I'm actually I'm drinking cider. So okay. yeah, no, it's it's fall. Fall. that's that's perfect. That's absolutely November is my favorite time of the year. Okay, it's Thanksgiving. It's the peak of college football season. Like, I love November. Happy November. Happy you. November. Um, uh, with November comes the very first. Uh, set of uh, college football playoff rankings, and rather than this, uh, dwell on a, a lot of stuff that happened last weekend, we're going to dwell on a lot of stuff that happened. Uh, this that was uh, Tuesday. That was uh, just yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody tonight. missed it because of Halloween. Um, I, I, I I missed most of it because I was handing out candy on my front porch. The right. final four rankings: number one, Georgia. Number two, Alabama. Number three, Notre Dame. Number four, Clemson. Um, rather, again, rather than a recap, Carla, what did you learn as these uh, these rankings came out for the first time? I learned that maybe for the first time in the in the history of these college football playoff rankings, because this is a relatively new thing, right? Mm -hmm. This is what year four of the, of the playoff. That maybe for the first time in the history of doing these rankings, head-to-head -head matchups matter early in this first ranking. We noticed mm -hmm. that, like in the last couple of years, that heads head-to-heads didn't really matter all that much. It was always on body of work. That was the thing we kept hearing over and over again from the committee. It's very clear in this in this first ranking that the committee is going to care about head-to-head -head matchups because what do we have? Oklahoma five your Buckeyes at six, Penn State at seven, right. in the order, right. you know, I mean, really. So it's, and the fact they put Georgia up on, you know, as, as number one, that didn't surprise me um, because it's kind of a, that's a strength of schedule, really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yes. absolutely, you know, yeah. Bama hasn't, Bama ain't played nobody. <laughs> and, and that's, Bama ain't played nobody, and, and there's another thing in their schedule that's coming up that I'm going to rant about here in just a, in just a second. But, but yeah, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Head with that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you know, the makeup of the committee changes every year, um, including this year, Robert Morris's president is on the committee. Um, really? yeah, yeah. Nice. The new president, okay. Robert, right, Robert Morris is on the committee. So okay. it's, it's, pardon me, wants to like email him and get his thoughts. Like after we get through the fine uh, end of this to see what he thinks about all this. Give it a try. Um, but, but no, it's, it, it's very interesting that when the, the different committee makeups, they, they value different things. Um, to be perfectly honest, as long as Georgia and Alabama were one and two, I didn't care what order they were in. To be honest, three to 13 right now, coin flip for the most part. I mean, mm -hmm. there's really not a lot of separation there. So I'm okay with where things are right now. It's going to sort itself out. We see that every year. It's going to sort itself out over the next couple of weeks. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much the head-to-heads continue to weigh in as we move on forward. 
Um, I, I would say uh, certainly uh, as an Ohio State fan, I am comfortable where I am, um, mm-hmm. I, and I think uh, I, I think winning out solves a lot of problems. Um, I, I would also observe that uh, Notre Dame, um, and I mentioned this a week ago, and this is this this is still on my mind, and it and it should still be on yours, and it should be on the minds of any anyone whose teams have a, a Final Four aspirations, but who have one loss. Notre Dame, Notre Dame gets the benefit of the doubt. Um, I, I know, you know, first ranking, and we're kind of just kind of throwing stuff against the wall and see what happens. Uh, but, but, um, and, and I'm not saying Notre Dame's not not deserving um, of a, you know certainly top ten and and, and probably top five. But uh, you know, there's Notre Dame, and and they they get they do get a look because they're Notre Dame. Um, and, and, uh, but again, but as, again, as I said last week, they, they, they still have, um, uh, uh, some, uh, tough games left. Um, so that's, that's the thing. Alabama also has tough games left. Uh, I will give them credit for that after, uh, after this weekend where they play, uh, LSU, uh, they are at, uh, Mississippi state and then they have the game against Auburn sandwiched in there. It's a game against Mercer. 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 Yep. I had to look up. Um, Mercer, Mercer is, is a, a one double a school in Macon, Georgia. Yes, and, it is. And my, my friend Caitlin went there she, uh, who played my wedding. She's the organist that played my wedding. Hi, Caitlin. So, hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> um, you, you did a really nice job at, at Carlos wedding. Um, <laughs> your football team has absolutely no shot at, at beating Alabama in the, in the second to the last week of the regular season. And I will say, I will say this, and I, and I will admit to being sensitive and I, we've gone over this before. I will admit to being sensitive after hearing about years, hearing for years and years about how state does not play anybody. It is inexcusable that the Alabama Crimson Tide are playing a one double a school the third week in November. Well, okay. We complain it, about this every year. Yes. Because the yes, SEC does continue. this. It's not just Alabama. It's, it's, it's the not. SEC. They they all play that stupid cupcake game in the at the end of November and it's across the board. Those are that's all like our annual soapboxes, right? Be, between the SEC cupcakes at the end of November and um, the Big Ten title game needing to be played outside. Right. Like those are our two soapboxes. Uh, yes, yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Every year. Um, so, so it's not just Bama, but but yes, SEC. Can we get rid of this finally? Um, because well, to be and, honest, they need they need the strength of schedule this year. At some point, yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, and this was a thing that Ohio State struggled with in a few different years. The uh, the, the big non conference game, uh, you know, doesn't that that's scheduled ten years ahead of time doesn't work out to be so hot because right. whatever happened to the other team, um, you know, and and uh, Alabama playing Florida State, you don't know that Florida State's quarterback's going to get injured. You don't know what the you know the actual state of the Seminoles this year, which uh, as it turns out is not especially good. Right. Um that's 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 not Alabama's fault. But at some point, you know, you might come down to the end of the season here if you're looking at Georgia and Alabama and Alabama might need that boost yeah to their strength of schedule and then you've got the the Mercer Bulldogs on, you know, the the, the week before the Iron Bowl. Right. Um SEC, knock it off, knock it off. Okay, Ohio State I, and, and Ohio State played a couple games against uh, Youngstown State uh, because of the previous coaches' connections there. Um, but we we we've sworn off uh, d- d- um, uh, games against one double eight opponents. Period, and that's what you need to do too. So. I'll save the other rant for the week before the Big Ten championship game. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I do want to let uh, AJ uh, get a chance. He's got good stuff going out there, um, including including uh, a one of our uh, 19,000 legit top 25 games this year, Arizona at Southern Cal. AJ, what you got? Hey, everybody. It's AJ uh, with this week's Pac-12 After Dark Report. Uh only two, only two days this week, though. Thursday night, no Thursday night games. So if you're listening to this on Friday, you didn't miss anything. There are no Thursday night games in the Pac-12 uh, this week, and nor Mountain West. I'm now just including Mountain West in because uh, Mountain West football is fun. You should watch more of it. Uh, Friday night, UCLA at Utah. We've got ourselves uh, a good old fashioned punch and fest. Uh, this this game is in uh, Salt Lake City. UCLA, Josh Rosen, 
They're soft. S O F F, as former Penguins coach Mike Tarion would say, soft. Uh, Utah is just going to punch him in the face over and over again. Uh, Saturday, we've got two games on. One game at 10 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. That's Oregon versus uh, Washington. Washington has played a whole bunch of cupcakes, and the one time they didn't play a cupcake, they got beat. So, hey, maybe Washington, this would be a good time to get a W over a larger brand in Oregon. Oh, by the way, they have beat they beat you 11 years in a row until you finally won one last year. So I'm going to take a guess that you're going to keep that one going. But, hey, crazier things have happened. Also, uh, Willie Taggart and uh, Oregon have been surprisingly good for a rebuilding year. Uh, so keep an eye out for that game. And also, uh, this is the main thing. The Pac-12 does a really great job of putting their best games on at the most inopportune hours for East Coast football watchers, like me. Uh, But we're going Pac-12 after dark plus, because that game is starting at 10.45 p.m., and it is USC versus Arizona, more or less for the Pac-12 South. Uh, Again, like I said last week, you watched Arizona for Khalil Tate. And this week, you're going to watch him for Khalil Tate against USC's defense. Uh, USC actually has a pretty stout little defense there. Plus, uh, Sam Darnold is, this might be a good game. This might be a bad game. We have no idea what to ever expect from Sam Sam Darnold this year. Uh, Everybody had a lot of NFL hype for Sam. It's not worked out that well. Um, The only other game this week that you should care about is uh, Mountain West football, 1045 p.m., BYU at Fresno State. Fresno State, right now? Low key, Alabama's best win right now. Um, don't tell anyone. So Fresno State has actually done pretty well this year. Uh, Jeff Tefford, uh, Tedford, not Tefford, Tedford. Jeff Tedford has actually done a pretty nice job since going over to Fresno State. So uh, keep an eye on that game at ten forty-five. So if the uh, USC Arizona game gets out of hand, you do have another game to flip to. That is in Fresno. So BYU at Fresno State that could be kind of fun. Um, And also at 10.30 is San Diego State at San Jose State. You should always watch that game just to see Rashad Penny because last week he he literally dragged a Hawaiian player seven yards. So um, that's this week's Pac-12 After Dark report. I've been AJ. Stay up late with me. Hashtag Pac-12 After Dark. Hashtag Mountain West After Dark. And uh, let's have some fun. Thank you, Dr. Kuftik. We appreciate your help. AJ is not actually a doctor. Um, but he plays one on our show. He plays one on our show. And and I think he, there was an old Twitter handle where he was Dr. Scooter at some point. This was this was a long time ago. I'm going to have to ask him about that. But I could. Um, I, I, I think that's the case. Uh, we are doing things a little bit differently. Um, we're, we have a, a two games that we thought were worth the full treatment. Uh, and, and they're going to be kind of speedy treatments because we got a lot of ground to cover. And then... Uh, we're going to go kind of sort of back and forth with uh, with some of the other games that we thought we, we just can't really skip over. So we're going to cover six games. Six? Yes. Yes, six. Kind of, good. I'm score one for the journalism majors. Um, <laughs> And the first, the first two we're gonna we're gonna do as a as as, a, as our, our normal treatment. Um, I should point out uh, from this point forward in the college football season, when I mention rankings, I'm going to be mentioning the college football playoff rankings rather than the Associated Press rankings that we've been using to this point. I will I will probably offer one more reminder of that. But from from here on, uh, that's what we're going to be looking at because let's be honest, that's what matters at this yep. stage. Um, so with, with that in mind, uh, we get to Bedlam, uh, number five, Oklahoma at number 11, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, the lower ranked team is favored by two and a half points. Carla, what do you think? Well, first of all, I, I, I mention this every year when we get a line that's like that at the two and a half points. Um, and the home team is favored by two and a half points. Really, the line for the home team is always three yeah. So a, a two and a half line for Oklahoma State right, means that actually they think it's a coin flip, maybe leaning like, Oklahoma. Um, oh, no. But, I don't know. But, no. What's going to happen? I don't know. Yeah. No, but really, this is <laughs> this is a fantastic game. The first thing I wrote down in my notes was that the big question in all of this was 
what's happened to Oklahoma's defense, right? Because we've seen that the last couple of weeks. But then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, wait a second. It's Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Why are we thinking about defense? Because it's not <laughs> I, going to I matter. I'm so glad you brought that up, and you'll see why yeah. in a minute. Yeah, it's it's not going to matter in this game. Uh, I mean, really, okay, so Oklahoma's averaging, you know, what, 586 yards per game, 43 points per game. Um, Oklahoma State, 569 yards per game, 44 points per game. So, I mean, pretty evenly offensive juggernauts. Baker Mayfield's thrown for 23 touchdowns. Mason Rudolph's thrown for 22. Um this is going to be this is going to be offense all the time, and and it's going to be a, I mean Bedlam's always a fun atmosphere to begin with. Um, the only thing that that really is kind of a differentiator here, Oklahoma's a little bit more balanced offensively. They do have a bit more of a run game than Oklahoma mm-hmm. State does, mm-hmm. um, so so that helps. But it's really can the Oklahoma defense stop or slow down the Oklahoma State offense enough to be able to outscore them? I, I mean, this really is going to be in Oklahoma. This is going to be a shootout um, in in Oklahoma. I love the fact that um, oh, the over under in this game is seventy six. Oh, um, I didn't even look. That's awesome. Yeah, That's- yeah. The over under is the over under seventy six. Take the over. Um, I. <sighs> I honestly, I don't know who to pick in this game. I think it's an interesting. I think it's a really interesting game because, in a sick sort of way, I feel like your Buckeyes need to root for Oklahoma to win this, um, because of strength of schedule with a loss. Like, yeah, but yet they're ranked ahead, so it's it, it's kind of a weird thing. But when I was looking at that, I'm like, does does Ohio State want Oklahoma to win or lose this game? I, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know? <'Cause, laughs> because if they don't, if they win this game, that's going to keep them, you know, firmly yeah. above here yeah. um, where it might get interesting is maybe if Oklahoma wins this game, if Iowa state wins out and we'll talk about them in a minute, um, they control their destiny because they beat Oklahoma. Right. Um, so, so Oklahoma could win this game and still not play for a big 12 title, which is crazy, but welcome to the big 12 this year. Um, so I, Oklahoma State playing at home, that's a tough, tough ask for the Sooners that have been really kind of fickle on defense. I think Oklahoma State wins this, but I'm really on the fence. I, I really don't I, – I, neither team stands out as being able to dominate the other. It's going to be a really close game. Last team that has the ball might win it. Um, but, yeah, it, it, watch this one if you can. I know there's a lot of games happening. Keep this one handy on your, on your thumb. Um, on the trigger, I'm guessing. I'm guessing Gus will be on the call for this one. I hope to God Gus is on the call for this one because it's going to be a zoo. Um, so, so yeah, uh, Bedlam, Saturday afternoon. Watch, watch it. I think that would be a Gus game because because Ohio State's uh, Ohio State plays at three thirty, but they're they're uh, back on the on the mothership this week. So I I think that's probably what would happen there. Um, not not that this game needs any more excitement. Um, I am I am so happy you mentioned the defenses because that was. That was a thing. I'm like, huh. I wonder about scoring defense in this game. And you will tell me, Mike, how can that possibly matter in this situation? <laughs> and I'm going to say, okay, it's probably not, but I knew Carl was going to talk about the offenses. So um, scoring defenses, Oklahoma is uh, 61st in the country. Oklahoma State is 53rd. Okay. And maybe, maybe that's – just enough. Plus the fact that the Cowboys are at home. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, uh, d- if I'm being honest, I, I will admit to being as conflicted as you are uh, admitted to be about about this game. But I, I'm I'm going with the Cowboys. Um, as far as what it means for for my team, I uh, I, I don't I don't. It, it's it's hard to say. Do you want do you want to uh, eliminate a team that's ahead of you? Uh, do you want strength of schedule to to help work in your benefit? I don't I don't have a clue. I don't know how that's going to work. But I am picking Oklahoma State in this game. Uh, next up, we have number nineteen LSU at number two Alabama. Uh, Alabama is favored. By three touchdowns. Uh, Carla, what do you think? This is an LSU team that we wrote off early in the season. 
right? Um, and we, we talked about that. You know, they they completely they lost. They got dominated by Mississippi State, which put me on the Mississippi State bandwagon. You know, that was ill fated. Um, uh, we, we both had that problem. Yes. Just yeah, <laughs> and, and and then they lost, and then LSU lost to Troy, and everyone went Tro Troy, Troy, Troy. The fun belt wins. You know, so so head scratchers. But then LSU did something that not a lot of teams are able to do, and that is they completely turned around after that loss to to mm -hmm. Troy. I mean, mm -hmm. people were calling for. We we had that conversation of who gets fired first, Butch Jones or Ed Orgeron, and come to find out it was Jim McElwain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, talk about how, how crazy the SEC is this year. How, how funny is it the Miami guy is now coaching Florida? Just as, as Yes. Sorry. Randy Shannon is now filling in as, as, as the coach at Florida. I know it's, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's a supposedly a temporary thing, but I, I, that, that's just delicious, delicious irony. <laughs> well, and it is for me because we're trying to get tickets to go to Florida, Florida State, and, and the, better, uh, the better that those teams keep losing, right. the cheaper tickets get. <laughs> so. nice. Sure. Yes. Yes. So, so we're good with this. Um, okay. But no, back to, back to the game at hand. Um, LSU turned things around. They beat Florida in the swamp, which was probably the, the beginning of the end for the Jim McElwain era, 17-16. Um, they rallied from 20 points down to beat a good Auburn team, mm -hmm. um, which was one of those that caught everybody's attention. And they had a solid win a couple weeks ago over Ole Miss. What I like about this game is the fact that LSU is entering after a bye. However, so is Alabama. Um, which kind of negates that whole process. The thing is, is what we just talked about. We don't really know for sure how good Alabama is. We, we've seen them dominate teams, but but lesser competition this year because the SEC West is down. Um, this is going to be the first true test that we've seen for Alabama since the Florida State game, which may have been the best Florida State was all year. Mm -hmm at this mm -hmm. point, but, but it's tough to gauge because of how, how far Florida State fell after losing Francois. It, 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 we, we don't really know for sure. We think Alabama is really, really good because of the way that they've dominated their competition this year. We'll find out for sure on Saturday. I think 21 and a half, I don't see that because that's just not the way SEC games go. Um, and But this is, again, this isn't the LSU defense, excuse me, this isn't the LSU defense we're used to. They've been allowing over 300 yards per game and 20 points per game. That's not the typical LSU stout defense that we're used to seeing. Right. Right. So I, I think Alabama is going to put up some points. I think 21 and a half is way too much. But I think Alabama will, will get this win. They and Like we just talked about, they have to win out mm -hmm. um, to, to, to secure – because then we get into a Georgia-Bama SEC title game. They can't afford – I don't think Bama can afford a loss. With as with as good as as Georgia is playing, um, I I think the committee would hesitate to put two SEC teams in, especially if Alabama doesn't have a signature win and they lose a, a, a game against this one of these teams upcoming. Maybe Auburn, they might think about that, but I don't know. I, this is a must win for Bama. I, I and you know Nick Saban, they're going to find a way to get the win. I think it's going to be closer than twenty one points. Yeah. No, number one, uh, uh, Nick is saying that they're not using this as motivation, as the, the, the CFP ranking as motivation this weekend. And and as we've discussed before, coaches, we know when you're lying. Okay, <laughs> we, 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 we know this. Yes. Um, I, I, I wonder, I, I, I do wonder about uh, the, 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 uh, the two teams from a conference in the, in the Final Four thing. Um, yeah. I mean... It, <sighs> It, it seems like when it happens, um, it, it, it probably would be an SEC situation, but uh, but I, I'm, but but I think you make a great point. Um, you know, if Alabama loses to Georgia in, in an SEC title game, and you have uh, hypothetically, you know, you've got uh, you've got a Clemson team that has won a, 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 a conference title, um, you've got you know God only knows from the Big Twelve, say. Ohio State wins wins the Big Ten championship. Um, you, you've got these, and 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 let's not discount Notre Dame uh, with a with an uh, with a, a one loss uh, in there well, as well. And here's and here's the interesting situation that we're talking about here. If Bama loses to Georgia, who is Notre Dame's one loss to? Georgia. Uh, Georgia. So you'd have Georgia. two one loss teams with the loss to the same team, which then brings it down to strength of schedule. And you could make a solid argument that Notre Dame's strength of schedule is better than Alabama's. Um, 
because they, they, in theory, would have wins over USC, NC yep. State, Michigan, and potentially Miami and Stanford. Yep. 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 We're, we're, we, we have veered off, uh, veered off Again, course here right. a little bit, but, but, but that's, it's, it's, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's interesting to think about as far as, um, um, uh, Alabama and LSU goes, I, I don't, man, I, I want, I want to see this be a game. I, I really, really do. And, and, and the, the turnaround that, Ed, um, Ogeron has done, uh, in Baton Rouge has been so impressive uh -huh. because, uh, a, a loss at home to Troy, um, that's, that, that's, a, a program changing defeat, uh, and and he has managed to overcome that, um, and he, he gets deserves all the credit in the world for it. I, I if this if this was in Tiger Stadium, this was in Death Valley, I would yep. take a really really hard look at LSU in this game, <clears throat> and and that's and as as a college football fan. Um, you know, you'd love to see even about anyone beat the the, the evil empire. I, I see the the line. The line I think is ridiculous, um, mm -hmm. but I, I think uh, Alabama wins this because it is at home, um, and 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 because I mean just the the immediate thing. Um, not that anyone would use this as motivation, but the immediate thing about the number two rankings. Um, that's 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 going to be a thing for them. So. Uh, we have, uh, like 18 more games to go through. <laughs> we have, we have four specifically more games to go through. We're going to do these quickly, uh, yep. sort of a speed run thing. Um, but there were, there were too many games that we, we just, we, we didn't want to gloss over. Carla, we're going to start with you. Number seven, Penn State at number, uh, number 24, Michigan State. Penn State is favored by eight and a half. Go. So this is the battle for the ugliest trophy in college football, the Land Grant Trophy. That's not what James Franklin says. He says <laughs> it's the most beautiful co trophy in college football. Have you seen it? <laughs> I, I have. I it have looks like it was created at a garage sale, right? I mean, we, we talk about this every year. The Land Grant Trophy looks like it was random stuff put together on a piece of wood. And here, trophy. Um, but this series could not be more evenly settled. In fact, it's tied 15-15-1. and one. Mm -hmm. um, a Penn State team reeling after last week, um, played well in the first half, got dominated in the second half, both on the line um, and in the secondary. Half of the fix the secondary problems this week going against Brian Lewerke, who threw for a school record 445 last week against Northwestern. Catch being here, there's two things. First of all, Michigan State lost in triple overtime. Bad loss for, for, for Sparty. They have to be deflated heading into this. Well, that and, serve and as they motivation. Had to, they had to come back to get to overtime in that, yes. in that game. Yeah. So you, you've got to wonder where their mental state is, whether they will come out trying to avenge that loss um, or whether they're going to feel deflated. It's it, We really don't know other than the fact that they've got Mark D'Antonio on their sideline. So you, you have to think they're going to at least come out fired up at the beginning. Penn State called a team meeting. Mm -hmm. This week, which tells you everything you need to know about where Penn State's heads are. Um, I think they're going to come out ready to avenge that loss. The secondary has to be ready. That's the only way Penn State wins this game. They obviously proved that they couldn't do it last week. They have to do it this week. They can't lose this game. I think this is a must win for Penn State. They find a way to get the win. Okay. I, uh, I, I agree. Um, I, I think the, uh, the, the players only meeting uh, is a good sign. Um, yeah. they're, they're taking it seriously. I also like what, what the players said coming out of the meeting. This is something that uh, we, we, my, my newspaper covered uh, pretty thoroughly. Um, their, their heads are in the right place. This is a, beating Michigan State is a pain in the butt, uh, especially in East Lansing. Um, it is, uh, it is the, the best example of Tressa Ball going uh, these days. <laughs> Um, so uh, eight, eight and a half could, could be about right. That, that might be like 10 to two. I'm not sure, but, uh, I see Penn state winning this one. Um, I take the next one, uh, number four Clemson at number 20 NC state Clemson is favored by seven. Um, Carla, do you remember who Kyle Bambard is? I do not. You do not. Kyle Bambard. Clemson should have lost two regular season games last year. And Kyle Bambard was the NC State kicker who missed the potential game-winning field goal uh, against Clemson. Um, and I am just this this total gut pick because this is at this is in Raleigh. Um, I am picking NC State to win this with Kyle Bambard kicking the game-winning field goal to to, to put the uh, the Wolfpack over the top. That would be sweet redemption, wouldn't it? I would love it. 
<laughs> I've got I've got two things in this game also. Um, first thing is, is is the NC State defense up to the task of stopping this this Clemson offense? That's a big question in this one. Um, if they can, then then we've got ourselves a game. The other motivation factor here: Clemson cannot lose with as tight as this you know top thirteen teams is. Um, next week they play Florida State. They travel to South Carolina at the end of the month on at Thanksgiving. Just Clemson games, yeah. absolutely cannot lose this game and still have a shot at the playoff because of how bad their loss is to Syracuse. So I think Clemson's going to be really motivated, but this wouldn't be a Clemsoning, but at the same time, you know, it, yeah. it, it would not stun me for the Wolfpack to win this game. Um, I'm going to lean Clemson, but, but yeah, it, this is another one of those is the coin flip. Okay. Okay. Um, your your uh, second game is up next, number 15, Iowa State. Everyone's darlings. Uh, it, they are playing at West Virginia, uh, and, and West Virginia is favored by the dreaded 2.5. Right. And and this is a game that, even though West Virginia is not ranked, Iowa State has to, Iowa State has to be ready for this game. They've been playing over their heads for the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and suddenly they control their own destiny in the Big 12. Um, which is crazy, you know. It's, they're the little Big Twelve team that could at this point. You know, everybody's behind them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you know, yeah. It, 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 it's a fun spot to be. Kansas State was in this role a couple of years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And we all got on the Kansas State bandwagon. Um, West Virginia's losses are all to ranked opponents. They've lost to Virginia Tech, TCU, and Oklahoma State, and they were in all of those games. They have not been dominated by any of their opponents. They've also been averaging forty-two point eight points per game. Going to be a tough test for this Iowa State defense going on the road in Morgantown, where regardless of time of day, the atmosphere in Morgantown is always bonkers, right? It just doesn't matter. The interesting (laughs) thing here, though, is that, yeah, exactly. um, West Virginia's defense, Mm -hmm. not as stout as we're used to. Same thing with LSU. Um, They've given up. um, They got pushed around last week by Oklahoma State, and they've really Mm -hmm. just been struggling the last couple weeks. Um, Iowa State also needs to be aware of Clemsoning. Yes. Because they play yes. Oklahoma State next week. Um, so they cannot overlook this game to get ready to play the Cowboys, who 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 knows where they will be based on how how Bedlam goes. Um, right. Iowa State should win this game, but my gut says West Virginia blows up the Big 12 in this one. That's just I, It's just a gut feeling at this point. I, I like Iowa State. I want them to keep winning. I love this storyline. I love Kyle Kempt never starting and then walking on at Iowa State and suddenly rallying this team with Matt Campbell at head coach. I just gut says West Virginia is ready for a big win to kind of mess everything up, and this could be it. I, I think I, I think West Virginia is what it is, um, and, and certainly at, uh, uh, playing in Morgantown, um, uh, the, 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 the Mountaineer fans will be will be ready for this prime for it. Um, I I just I just wonder it is a hard thing for a team that has been down so long to suddenly make this turnaround. Yeah. Um, and 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 I I have to wonder, you know, at some point, um, th- these guys are looking at their schedule, and, and I know they're looking at Oklahoma State next weekend, and maybe maybe they're not paying so much attention to the trip to West Virginia, um, and and that would be an error. Uh-huh. Um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about this, but if they don't know how to win. Um, it, it, and, and they don't know how to win a tough game like this. This is the weekend. That game at Morgantown is the one where, where, where they could struggle. So my, my, my gut says the same thing as yours. My gut says West Virginia wins this one. Um, and then the final game we have uh, going this week, uh, number six, Ohio State at Iowa. Ohio State's favored by 18. I, I, I included this on the schedule because, uh, duh, and uh, also because of the trouble that that Penn State had in Iowa City earlier this season, mm-hmm. um, that's not a, it's, it's it's not a knock on Penn State. And I and I mentioned this when we were when we were talking about that game. That ain't a hard uh, that ain't an easy place to play. Um, I, I'm I'm actually kind of relieved that this isn't a night game. Uh, although I, it's sort of like uh, Morgantown, I'm not sure it matters all that much. Um, as I as I look at this, uh, especially given the the, the win last week, uh, and, and and what happened with that, and what what had to happen to get the win in that situation, um, and there's and there's a game coming up against Michigan State at home. That's 
there's a there's a there's a a, a, a a revenge factor there from the from the 2015 season that rain game where Michigan uh, State kicked the uh, game winning field goal as time expired. There are there there is potential there is potential for a letdown, um, and I am I'm gonna hope. Uh, and, and 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 to be honest, I I feel fairly comfortable with the notion that that's not coming this week. I would actually look at the Illinois game uh, right right before uh, Michigan uh, is is a, a potential problem as far as that goes for Ohio State. Um, in this situation, I see a tough game. Um, I I would I would feel awfully lucky and awfully fortunate to get out of Iowa City with an with an eighteen point win. Um, but I, I don't see the the letdown coming this time around. So I'm I'm gonna go with my Buckeyes. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. This isn't quite the Iowa team that we're used to. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. Penn State had to fight real hard to get that win earlier this year, but they're just not quite as the force to be reckoned with in the West this year. Um, you know, that role has kind of fallen to to Wisconsin. They they've caused some headaches, but um no, I think I think I think your Buckeyes have had the eye on their eye on the prize at this point, and um, I, I I think they know that they have to go in and win this game. Um, so I I, I I I don't like that line either because it's Iowa City, um, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. two touchdowns, I think that's reasonable. I just don't see eighteen, um, but fourteen, thirteen, fourteen, somewhere in there. They're not going to win by three touchdowns. Two touchdowns. They're not. Two touchdowns would be fine. I'd be I'd be. Be fine with that. I'd be fine with that. Um, oh, what, you know what? what? Oh, go ahead. Go. I was just, just going to say, here's the craziest thing about this week, the game that we huh. didn't even talk about, Miami, Virginia Tech, two top 25 teams in the ACC. Like, <laughs> you, you couldn't stand not to bring that up, could you? <laughs> and I, just, honestly, I have, I, have no idea. I have no idea what's happening with that one. I really, really I, don't. You, you know, I really don't either. And the fact that Miami tends to win at the last minute. Um, mm -hmm. it, you mm -hmm. know, so maybe Virginia Tech? I I don't know, sure. but yeah, that's how crazy this week is. Go Hokies. I'm good with that. Sure. <laughs> I, have no, I have no logic whatsoever on any of that, but it's just the, like. The overarching crazy. point here, the overarching point here, boys and girls, is um, basically uh, duct tape your, yourself to the uh, to the couch on Saturday uh, and, and just watch everything you can until your eyeballs bleed because <laughs> there is that much good college football uh, coming this weekend. Um, Carla, thank you once again. Yep. Thanks as always. That was fun. Uh, guys, I hope you have as much fun as we are going to have on Saturday. Thank you for watching and we will see you back here next week.